driving vlog, I guess, in a way. Um, I've got to keep the camera tilted this way when I'm driving just because it's the only way it's sitting up where I can not be like holding it, holding it the whole time. So, or at least not as much. So, I hope everybody's having a good day. I just wanted to jump on here really quickly and give a little bit of like a supportive, not a rant, but talk video on here. Um, I wanted to touch base a little bit on how not to feel guilty about having social anxiety and whether it be from being depressed or PTSD or whatever it may be. Um, it was something I struggled with really badly when I first was diagnosed with PTSD and it took a really long time to get past it and beyond it and really cope better and learn how to leave my house again and have fun and trust hanging out with people. So I want to touch base on that. I don't know exactly what to call this video yet, so we'll see if I can figure something out. But basically, when I first, first was diagnosed with PTSD, I didn't handle it very well, of course, and I had already been struggling with it for a while without knowing that's what it technically was. It was a little bit more than a year after the event that gave me PTSD happened that I was officially diagnosed. And I was already having um, the beginning symptoms of it. So like I would feel like I was out of body, like looking down on myself. There were a few times where I'd wake up and go to the bathroom and I'd feel like I was on the ceiling, like trying to get back into my body, if that makes sense. And I just couldn't somehow reach myself. And you believe it's happening and you believe it's real and it's so scary. And then the vivid flashbacks back to that exact moment and reliving the event, it was just really awful and due to that it was hard for me to want to go anywhere because I was afraid I would have a PTSD attack or an out-of-body moment or something would happen and it would embarrass me and it would happen in front of a friend or a potential partner or whatever you know I was just afraid of the embarrassment and I felt sh ashamed about it I didn't want people to know what I had went through and what had happened to me so rather than getting help and you know really dealing with everything that I was going through and managing it I just wanted to bury it and not let anybody know what was going on I didn't want to open up yet wasn't ready to and I just kind of locked myself away and I would feel really bad because people would want to see me or hang out or do something and I never wanted to and I would get so anxious at the idea of something going wrong and them and having to explain to them why I was panicked or why I reacted the way I did and having to go through and explain you know I have PTSD and this and that and I just I wasn't comfortable doing it I wasn't at a place where I accepted it within myself and I was ashamed of it so I of course wasn't going to try to have other people accept me so for me I know for many other people it's just having social anxiety or having just phobias of leaving your home, period, or, you know, just being really depressed or down on yourself and not wanting to leave. And friends can make you feel like shit about it. There's people who are really supportive and understood and were there for me, and they were wonderful, wonderful people. And then there were other people that, you know, if they were having a bad day and wanted you to come over immediately, that was something I couldn't do because, you know, it was that rushed feeling scared me so I would say well no I can't and then it would be oh well why can't you just come when I need you ever you know I get that you'll call me and you'll talk to me or you'll FaceTime with me but you know I wanted you to come over why can't you do that and nobody was very nobody who was going to react like that would be very understanding that kind of person's not really going to understand what you're dealing with and coping with because when they're panicked and they're going through something bad they're the type that needs somebody there immediately and they don't want to be alone whereas for me it was the opposite when I'm depressed or down or having a PTSD attack I want to be alone and I want to be away from people just because I didn't want to put anyone else through it or have anyone else see it or whatever you want to say so that's kind of where I was at where there were the really good supportive people who understood what I was going through and then there were the really not so nice people and I would feel so guilty and so overwhelmed about 
with everything when, you know, I felt I was letting people down. One of my biggest loves in life is helping people and doing things that help people because I never want to hurt anyone's feelings or make them feel bad about something. So at first it would just be, you know, I would just not go and it would be all, I can't, I can't go today, I can't make this work, I can't, whatever, and people would judge me and be harsh on it. And then it was, I would go, but I would panic so many times on the car ride to go somewhere that I would be pulling over every couple of blocks, couple of streets and parking somewhere and just shaking and crying sometimes because I was so panicked about the idea of leaving the house and going somewhere and something going wrong. So it would take me sometimes two hours to get 10 minutes up the road. And then people aren't going to understand if you're even five or ten minutes late. People aren't going to be supportive of it. So I'd start leaving super early for things. And it just made life hell. And I didn't feel like I deserved... I didn't feel like I was... It, I deserved that understanding. I didn't feel like I was worth somebody waiting for me. Or that I was worth somebody understanding that sometimes I might have to cancel because I had a PTSD attack that day that was really bad or something. And the shame just became overwhelming to deal with and nothing good came from it. So my advice, now that it's been years since I got diagnosed and since I've had, had been dealing with PTSD and have been dealing with it, and it's gotten a lot better. I still have days where I have to pull over once or twice on a long drive. That still happens to me. I still sometimes do have moments where, you know, a car door slamming or something happening will throw me into a PTSD flash and I'll get really jumpy or flinchy and I have to explain things to people. But I've become more accepting of that and I want to help people by being more open with my PTSD so they don't feel ashamed or alone so I've I've gotten a much better grasp on being able to leave the house and actually risk someone seeing that weaker side of me or more vulnerable side I should say because it's really not weakness at all um, but my advice to you is if you're not at that point do not feel ashamed of it don't feel like you're letting anybody down because you cannot handle it because you know if you could you would be there it isn't because you're a bad friend or because you don't love somebody or you don't care it's not even because you don't want to be there it's because for you it's traumatic to even think about getting in the car it's traumatic to think about you know driving however many minutes 15 minutes up the road and what if something happens and it sets you off and it you know your whole day is ruined then and whatever it may be it's such a stressful thing to you that until you are ready to cope with it and deal with it you deserve to have people be understanding and try to do other things offer well I offer to make a phone call you know even FaceTime if that's something you would be open to doing you don't have to but that's a way where you could get in contact with your friends and see them and be there if they need you emotionally or whatever it may be. But you can also go at your own pace. And the thing that really, really helped me a lot was I would have friends come to my house at first. And I did it with only like my very, very best friend who I trusted. I would have them come over and that way they would get used to how I was with my PTSD more. And I get comfortable with that person I trusted the most, I got comfortable with them seeing me get flinchy from a PTSD attack or me react a certain way or have a flashback. And once I got more comfortable with in my own home, the safety of my own home, that very trusted best friend seeing it, I would start taking a walk just up and down my road, staying on my street, staying safe where I was never even more than a minute away from my house. But that way, if it was not at home, that that would happen. I would get used to that and then it would be you take a walk around the block then I started taking a drive and it would be a drive around the neighborhood so like up to the gas station and back which is exactly half a mile away like exactly on the dot so I would drive to the gas station and home and that was it and I would have my friend with me and then I would do it alone and that was 
to get myself to where I was comfortable leaving and going to a different location and risking someone seeing me in public, but not, it wasn't a long time. It wasn't like I couldn't get back to my safe place. Once I got that really under control, it was such a big help. And having a support person, whether it be a friend or your grandmother or your sister, whatever it may be, finding someone supportive who will help you in that is amazing. And then once that got really good, I had the friend I would say I trusted the second most in life. I had them go and help me and started bringing them on, you know, little drives. They could run to the store with me, which was about four minutes from my house. And that helped because it was a little bit further and a different person, but I wasn't ashamed and I was okay taking the risk. And there were times where, you know, someone in the grocery store would throw down one of those like cartons and I would get scared and nervous and it would freak me out. And you know what? It was worth it because it was worth that exposure and that time. And it, it just made the world a difference. But when you try to push yourself for other people, you end up not really being there. I would push myself in the beginning and I would go and I would hang out with the people who wanted me to and I would either be late and they'd be mad at me and I would be super down on myself and the whole moment would be tainted because of that or it would be I was so in my head and I was so upset already because of my PTSD and everything going on that I wasn't there in the way I could be if I would have called them and been there or if I wasn't in such a bad spot that day or if you know I took a smaller step and had them come to my house instead if you are going through something traumatic and awful hiding it and pushing it down never helps and I did it for a long time where I hid what I was going through I was always fine I was always the one to help friends because the way I look at it, it looked at it and still look at it is I know what it's like to every day have flashbacks of the worst thing that ever happened to me. I don't want to cause anyone else even an ounce of pain. And because of that, I would end up going and pushing myself to see people and to do what made them happy and to be there even when I couldn't be there for myself. And when I was there, but in, but I wasn't in a good spot personally, mentally, I found that my advice wasn't as good as it is now. And my ability to be a support system wasn't as it wasn't as fluent, it wasn't as pure and real as it is now. So taking care of your own mental health and making sure you get yourself comfortable makes the world of difference. And what I did once I got to the point where I could go to the store up the road and the gas station and walk around the block and everything with a couple of close friends was I started doing things that really made me happy that I loved and doing them alone and with my trusted people, which were two friends at this point. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a friend. It can be anybody. It can be a neighbor. It can be a counselor. It can be whatever it is for you. Whoever you trust most and would trust to do this with. Um, but then we would go out and like I would go by my horses and we would go and ride the horses and it was peaceful for me. And I would go, um, I loved animals, so I would go volunteer and help out somewhere around animals and I would do things that I knew brought me joy and happiness but also the people I was with enjoyed and that way even if it was scary to go a little further drive a little further do something like that the reward was there and it helped get me grounded so you know we would go and drive and take a walk do something like that and you know, go to the park whatever it may be to make sure that something positive was going to come out of it even if there were negatives and now it's to the point where I can go somewhere that I'm dreading going like the doctor and bring a friend along and you know go to their house and help them out after and support them and be there because I'm at a really good place mentally and like I said there are still times where it takes me 15 minutes too long to get somewhere because I did have to pull over once or twice and take a moment and breathe but that's okay and you've got to be honest with yourself and with people about what you're going through and how you're dealing with everything so don't be don't be ashamed to say that you need a minute or that you need to heal yourself before you can go and be there for everybody else i'm going to touch more on this in a 
video coming up soon. But I just wanted to really quickly check in and, you know, say hi to everybody and let you guys know you're not alone and to please take care of yourselves before you try to change the world and help everyone else. Because that was always a huge problem of mine and it really wasn't helping them at all by being there when I wasn't in a good place mentally. So please take care of yourselves and if any of the little tips that helped me help you then I'm really happy to hear that. I hope you guys have a good day.